Welcome to our video series where we're going through the cat pat phase three and we are busy with the report aspect of the phase three. Remember the phase three has two aspects. There's the report and the website. Before we can even get to the website, we have to make sure that we finish off our report. And we've done videos where we've gone through the introduction. We're now going to move to the next part of the phase three, which is the discussion and the analysis. So we did the introduction in our last video. And now we're going to move on to part six, which is the discussion and the analysis. So what is it that they want? Now, it says you've already had some of the headings and the information added, which is something that we were supposed to do at the end of phase two. If you didn't do it, that's fine. We're going to do it now as well. We're going to add information from phases one and two. Please take note, it says one and two. And I'll explain later where we get that information from and how it's all connected. So don't forget that we are looking at the summaries from phase one. We're looking at the questionnaire, spreadsheet and database from phase two and all information, data, graphics, charts, tables, pictures as needed. Make sure that the data information is relevant and they also ask for hyperlinks. Now take note, there's a couple of hyperlinks here. Must be used to navigate to other websites and external documents. So for example, we want to go to our spreadsheet and our database and hyperlinks to external data information sources must be easy to locate and recognize. So we must make sure that they are clearly visible that there are hyperlinks. So how do we do the discussion and the analysis part of our phase three? So in our document, we've got our discussion and analysis section. And here's where we're going to add the parts. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is get the information from phase one. So I'm going to scroll down to my addendum. Obviously, we haven't completed this for this video series, but you would have done it. You would have done your 10 questions. You would have your 10 questions in different categories. You would have where you got that information from and you would have summaries. Now, in our video series, we either had the summary listed over here or we had another document which contained the summary. But either one's fine. But the key thing here that I want to look at first is the category so you might have multiple categories they said preferably three categories that your questions are grouped into three different categories so for example in this case we've got background impact and solution so what i want you to do is you're going to take those categories and make them almost like little mini paragraph headings for our discussion and analysis. So there are my subheadings for the discussion analysis. I've used those headings, but just make sure that the headings are in the correct order. What do I mean by that? I mean, they flow correctly. You can't talk about the solution and then the background of the topic. So for this makes sense. We talk about the background of the particular situation. We talk about its impact and we talk about solutions. That seems to flow naturally. As I said, you can't talk about the background at the end and solutions in the beginning. Maybe the impact that you're talking about here is the impact of the solutions, then maybe your impact will come after solutions. You know your information, so you put those headings in an order that makes sense, that flows. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The next thing is we are going to, for example, for the background category, all the questions that have a background category, we're going to take that information, that summary information, not the link, but the actual text, the summary that you created. We go, so if you've got it in a different document, you must go to that document and copy it. So I just added, for example, the text over there. It, as I said, it could be in a document or it could be the text. You want the actual text. We are going to put all the background question summaries under the background heading all the impact are under the impact heading all the solution ones under the solution but before i do this this is one little step i'm going to do before i do that i want to reference that information i need to reference where i got these different informations so this information needs to be registered in your sources for your references so under references over here if you go to manage your sources you will see here that i have no sources in my list so what you would need to do is you need to add a new source so for example this is a website so we're going to come here to website we're going to fill out the author fill out the name of the web page fill out the year month and day that it was created and then show all bibliography fields so we get a couple more options over here and here is where we can scroll down and find the URL, which I just made up quickly, but you go get the actual URL and the date that you accessed it, which is my date over there. So that's the year that we accessed it, the month and the day, and any other information about that website that you've got. So I'm gonna add that to my sources. 
So now you can see I've got that information over there. Then I would add all, all of them, all of them that are unique, go add all of your sources. You might have a question that is answered by the same source multiple times. So maybe question four and one, the answers were coming from the same source. Then once you've done one, you've done it already, but make sure that you add all the unique sources to your sources. Make sure that they're all there. And then we can start the copy process. So we're gonna copy and paste it in your discussion analysis under the correct heading. This was an impact one. So we're gonna paste it over here. And then you'll paste all the ones that deal with background under the background and the ones for solution under solution. You fill in your headings, you copy and paste the information. So let's pretend this paragraph comes from that first source. Then we must make sure that we indicate where we got that information from. So I'm gonna come here to references and we're gonna insert citation. I only have the one, but you would have had all of yours already there. And we go, this information comes from that article over there and then this one will come from another article so at the end of each paragraph you'll indicate which source you got that information from so you can click on it and then you can see that it is a valid source that's that it's not just been copied and pasted it's the actual source that's going to be putting the information in once all the paragraphs are here and once you've referenced them all correctly now it's your job to go through and read through everything and make sure that it flows now we already got the headings in some sort of correct flow now you look at all the paragraphs that relate to background and you make them work together they mustn't look like separate paragraphs that you just post it in make sure that they flow into each other maybe you might need to move this paragraph up one space another one down make them flow if the one talks about AI in general, then you can talk about it as the first one and then the second one. But when we talk about AI in the medical sector, this is the information and you talk about that. So make sure that the paragraphs flow into each other. Get someone to read through your content just to give you advice on what they think if it flows, if something seems left out. You don't want to remove any content, but you just want to make sure that it flows from one into the other. So this is going to be how we add the information from phase one. So just so that you remember, your phase one was your research, but your phase two was based on opinions of others. You took people's opinions and you went and formulated charts on it. You did queries on it with the data. We need to somehow incorporate our phase two information into this. You can look at your headings and see where your information from your spreadsheet and your database comes. What information are we getting from the phase two? You want to look at your spreadsheet charts, your specific formulas. Maybe there's a calculation that gives you a particular number that you can talk about, your database queries, your database reports. You want to look at those things. So maybe there's a chart that is part of the solution aspect, is part of the background. Maybe it's about in, in the discussion here, you talk about the different tools, the AR tools that people use. And then you can say, based on my research, I found that, and then you've got a chart which talks about what the people that you surveyed use. So then you can incorporate that as the next paragraph after that, saying, we did a survey with people in South Africa, in Eastern Cape, or whatever your target audience is. And from our survey, we found that majority of those surveyed used this AR. And then you can put the chart in as a diagram and you can talk about that chart. Maybe you've got information about the impact or what percentage of people are using a particular AI and you can talk about the impact on that. If you've got solutions, you can go and incorporate that. Maybe there's a query that you found information that you incorporate a screenshot of that query and talk about it. So when you incorporate these things, they require you to do a little bit more of a discussion on the actual thing. You can't just put a chart in here and just leave it. You need to incorporate that chart into whatever topic you are talking about and discuss how it relates to whatever you're talking about. Remember the flow, make sure that it all flows together. If your information from these doesn't fit into any of those categories, then you might want to make a new category. Maybe you want to call it research. And then over here, you can talk about what you found in your research. But if possible, try incorporate that into your headings. And if you can't put it there. So you really want to incorporate pictures. You want to incorporate the charts, those type of things into this discussion analysis. That's how we're going to incorporate the phase two. 
So I just added a paragraph over here talking about how we conducted our survey. Remember, you assume the people don't know what you did. So we've got to mention that you did a survey, mention who you interviewed, talk about that the responses were analyzed in a spreadsheet and discuss some of your results. Now, some of these you might talk about as your findings, as things that you found out, which we'll talk about in our next video. So there might be things over here that we do here that we might move into our findings rather that might fit better there. But remember, they do want you in your discussion as to incorporate phase two as well and they want you to have hyperlinks as well so when we talk about based on the following questionnaire do you see how i've said following questionnaire then you can select questionnaire you can i would suggest making it bold and then you we can go and insert a link and then link it to your phase two questionnaire maybe a link to the actual online google form or maybe you've got a pdf version over here that will work as well and then when we talk about the spreadsheet, give them the opportunity to go look at the spreadsheet. So say further information from the spreadsheet analysis of the survey can be found here. So when you say found here, you can click on that here, make it bold and make that a link to your spreadsheet. Incorporate your database and so on. That way we're going to have links to your external files which is what they want, your external documents, like your spreadsheet and your database, you must have that there, as well as navigate to other websites. Now that's already technically incorporated into our bibliography when we do that, but you can maybe, this website particularly says this, so you might want to have a link to another website. It is possible to have that as well. By doing this, we've got only relevant information from our phase one and phase two. The information is grouped according to appropriate headings. Yes, it follows a logical sequence that it flows. They even use the word flows, flows naturally from one to the other. And if you've got any any graphics that are relevant and appropriate. In other words, your charts are relevant. If you've got a diagram from a particular website that it's appropriate for what you are trying to discuss. So tick, 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 we'll get all the marks for that. And then over here, I know we've got to do some of this still, but we would then also get that mark for navigate to external data like your spreadsheet and database. So we want that tick as well. So just to recap the steps, first go take these categories and put them as subheadings under your discussion and analysis. Make sure you put them in the correct order Order so that they flow nicely then go and add your sources over here go and add all of these to your source list so that you can add citations later on then you're going to copy all the information for the different categories so take background take all the information from background and paste it under background take all the impacts summaries and paste it under impact take all the solution ones and paste it under solution obviously your Categories might be different, but I'm using that for this example. Pasting them under each category and then make sure that you reference them by inserting the citation for where you got that information for that paragraph. Once that's done, make sure that everything flows nicely from paragraph to paragraph. Then go incorporate your spreadsheet charts, your formulas, anything from your queries or your reports. Incorporate that preferably into your three already made categories. If you need another category like research, you can talk about that, but go make sure that it flows and then make sure that that you are referencing your questionnaire, your spreadsheet and your database and then create links to it. Highlight it, make it bold and go insert hyperlink to those external documents. By doing that, you'll get all the marks for this part of the phase three. Good luck, everyone. Go get those marks. Remember, if you need all the other help for your pet, you need to make sure that you subscribe to at Miss Long RT and Cat so that you don't miss a video. Also follow us on TikTok at Miss Long Education and remember to share us with your friends so we can help others as well. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.